But you look at the economic impact of these illnesses and you see the savings that could be made if we manage them better. And yet we know most patients don't follow guidance or guidelines um, to any great extent. Um, I was fascinated to hear the pediatric uh, view of this and about the, the role of primary care here. I'm a GP by background. Um, and we know that we have a lot of interactions with patients with both allergic rhinitis, asthma, COPD. And we know we have a lot of databases that help us, but we don't have a very effective way of monitoring how, uh, how this disease is monitored. So we were thinking in terms of the new technologies and how to involve patients in their own care in a more effective way. And I'm very lucky to work with a group of uh, clinical entrepreneurs at the moment that we've uh, uh, developed in the UK. And all of them get this technology, and all our age group don't. And quite frankly, we've got to wake up to the fact you don't switch these off. You put them on silent, and you continue to monitor whatever it is that you're trying to monitor. So please just realize that most of the things that we can do come through this technology now, the smart technologies. Um, I think this disease burden that we're demonstrating here uh, has a, a major effect on society and a major effect on us in how we manage it. So we have to develop smart technologies and self-care applications that patients can use easily. We have massive regulation around the introduction of new pharma. We have increasing regulation about the introduction of technology. But my argument would be that this is a d democratic process where people can opt into self-care rather than being forced into <coughs> self-care, which we often have tried to do in the past through guidelines. So with uh, Jean, and uh, I just want to mention Olivier Vandenplas as well, and his remarkable contribution to the occupational health side of this, uh, we've developed the Fit at Work uh, app or the Allergy Diary. And this is free uh, to, pa to patients, free to uh, clinicians. It's one of those simple additions to life that once you get used to it is, is a little bit like when you get used to uh, driving an automatic car, you forget how to use the gears, don't you? So again, you put things into life that are simple, that patients can easily use and easily re uh, record their data. I'm just going to go through a few slides now about the type of scoring system that we get for patients. It's imperative uh, for this to be able to record accurately their day-to-day -day symptomatology because the total number of symptom scores matters considerably to the disease load and predicts the likelihood of loss of productivity and uh, the uh, <coughs> amount of symptoms that they have and how that implements, uh, sorry, impacts on society. And when we do this and we add these symptoms up, we know that you have to have the presence of rhinorrhea to define this. But once you start to get the multiples of symptoms, four, five, or six additional ones, then you see the correlation between whether people's work or daily activities are impaired. And this is quite a remarkable and unique set of data that Jean and, and, and others have collected over the last two years, demonstrating that disease burden is affecting um, uh, workplace and school place uh, effectiveness. So what do they see when they open this app? It's a very simple visual analog scale where they record their symptoms and how much you, uh, symptoms you're having, how is it bothering you? Very simple. And once these symptoms start to get into the, uh, as you can see, a rag rated uh, zone there, once it gets into red, you see that the patients will get additional information on how to manage their, their, their uh, disease. There's a basic uh, uh, amount of data on here. A lot of it is geared towards self-management and the type of escalation of, of treatment. But it's important to realize that there is a, a cutoff point where we're asking them to contact their usual carer or usual physician. And that might be a pharmacist rather than just a GP in this day and age. So we've started this study in several sites in Northern Ireland, in the north of England, and we will eventually put it into, uh, <coughs> develop it again in a, a large manufacturing situation. It's open access. The six-week evaluation period means people don't get bored by it. And it's seasonal. Uh, we're using it throughout the season, so we'll be starting again in April of this year, going through to October. So it covers most of the allergens uh, that you're commonly aware of. 
We're hoping to report this fully by the end of the year, and I hope to be able to come back to you at the end of this year to demonstrate how effective it is at reducing that disease burden. And the preliminary results we have already demonstrate that this is true. Thank you very much.